Hi there, my name is Brie, and if you are new here, please sit down and talk about true crime while I get ready. Today's case is about a love triangle that really only had two participants, but someone managed to make their way into that triangle when nobody was into her, everyone was over her except for her. Today's case is going to be about Kendra Hatcher and her relationship with Dr. Ricardo Piñagua and Dr. Piñagua's ex-girlfriend Brenda Delgado. Before Kendra and Ricky were a team, Brenda was dating Ricky. When they broke up, she was not happy about it. When she found out that her man was in love with someone else, she kind of took matters into her own hands. Before we get into those details, let's go ahead and get started with Brenda Delgado. Brenda was brought to Dallas from Mexico in 1982 when she was just a little girl and her dad would go on to work in construction and her mom would work in the United States Postal Service as well as cleaning houses. Brenda was loved by all of her teachers and when she graduated high school, she said that her dream was to go to medical school but because of the conditions her parents quickly said no to that idea so she would have to get just different jobs here and there and she would actually end up being a dental assistant in north dallas texas which is where she met dr ricardo Paniagua. dr ricky had a residency with a dallas hospital and had just moved from california and I just want to add that he was actually finalizing a divorce at this time. I don't know if Brenda knew about the divorce, but regardless, they hit it off in November 2012. They had moved in together. Sorry. Oh, baby, you do you. They moved in together and they got straight to business because in early 2013, they found out that she was pregnant. However, Brenda decided that the timing wasn't really right for them. So she told Ricky that she wanted to abort, to which she did. And then she later enrolled into a dental hygiene program at Sanford Brown College. A few months after her enrollment, they ended up breaking up. I don't believe that Brenda was big on the breakup, which makes me believe that I think Ricky was the one who ended things. So... Brenda was a very crafty lady. Ricky had enrolled into a salsa class and guess who was also enrolled into a salsa class? Miss Brenda. So I don't know if she just like shimmied her way back into his life or what but after that salsa class they ended up in a relationship again but it didn't last long and by February 2015 they were just done like done all together i don't know if brenda just kept trying to do the same technique because anywhere that dr ricky would go he would always find brenda i'm talking about if he went to the grocery store to get bananas guess who was buying apples if he was going to the library to get a book he was in the computer lab there is just it's too many coincidences, especially being in Dallas, such a big area, and then always being in the same places as your ex-boo-boo. That's just weird. On top of that, she had a secret key to his apartment. Secret key. Mm -hmm. She would also go through his emails because she knew all of his passwords. And then on top of that, because she had all of his passwords, she could sign into his iCloud and look up his GPS location just to see where he was at. So I get it. Sometimes you can just look on Facebook and just see what your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend is up to, but she was taking it to a whole different level. So in June 2015, things got a little bit awkward because she saw that Dr. Ricky had fallen in love and he actually sent her an email out of courtesy he really didn't even have to send her anything because like for what they're friends aren't they like why would he need to but out of courtesy he sent her an email and just basically told her hey i'm seeing someone and i really like her and kind of just like can you step off a little bit like can you take a step back that really crushed brenda because on top of the fact that she was 
stalking him and like obsessed with him was seeing someone new like why would you do that like i guess in her head they were still dating or she still had some sort of attachment and the fact that he had already moved on i know that killed her and that special someone that ricky had told brenda about was kendra hatcher kendra was truthfully an all-american girl in high school she was the captain of a cheerleading squad and she was also on an all-girls volleyball team growing up and she would actually also help in community bible studies for children who lived in low-income areas she eventually graduated from the university of kentucky uh, college of dentistry she would spend her spring breaks in ecuador fixing children's teeth for free and i know that there's no such thing as a perfect person but literally like when you paint this picture she was just an amazing serving person like who would not like her kendra met ricky on tinder in may 2015 which was just three months after he had broken up with brenda so you can imagine that it just stuck her like a knife they weren't the perfect relationship, but they definitely did have quite a historial. Brenda even had a roommate that said Brenda would literally only talk about Kendra and Ricky. So that roommate literally said, okay, this is too weird. <laughs> I gotta go. I'm gonna break the lease um this is just too weird and and when i say that literally that person just booked it because there's no way that someone could just that could be their only topic of interest kentra also started asking people around if they knew someone who knew someone who would want to hurt someone on one occasion she even asked one of her cousins that if she gave her a bat if she could go beat up kendra and kind of just intimidate her a little bit her cousin did say no i do want to say that later on with time brenda actually met crystal gomez crystal gomez was a friend of the person that used to live with brenda her old roommate i don't know how that um friendship began crystal did work in a dentist office so i don't know what it is because that's literally like three people in a dentist office. Brenda didn't take long before asking Crystal if she could follow Kendra around, kind of see what her whereabouts were because the intention was to execute her. She offered her $500 so that she could follow her around so that she could know like how she could get this perfect, you know, know where she's at, what time she goes, everything she does because she doesn't want to get anything wrong. One day, they meet Christopher Love. Christopher is a neighbor of Crystal's mom. And Christopher isn't the brightest of the bunch. He has a criminal record. He is a small-time drug dealer. And he needs cash because he wants to open up um, a business. Okay, you need some money? Like, what are you trying to open up, buddy? He wants to start up a prostitution ring. With time, Brenda offered him $3,000 to execute Brenda. And that was made up of money as well as drugs. Also at this time, Brenda and Ricky are planning on getting married and moving back to California. You may ask yourself, how does she know all this good stuff? Because she still has access to all of his emails and with those emails she can see everything that he basically purchases and all of his bookings so she knows now that she really needs to hurry up if she wants to go through with her plan and truthfully i don't know what she's thinking like if she's not thinking about the aftermath but we'll get to that on september 2nd 2015 they were actually gonna go to cancun because it was a holiday weekend and Brenda, being ever so crafty, knows that she needs an alibi for the time of the plan. Brenda decided to meet with her friend Jose. They went to the library and then they went to go get some drinks from Chili's. 
Brenda had also asked Jose if she could borrow his car. No red flags here. Like, she's just asking for a car, you know, like, okay, sure, you can borrow my car. Well, before they go to Chili's, Brenda goes to Crystal and gives her the car. Crystal then gets the car and then goes to get Crystal for love. Once they have Crystal for love, Crystal and Christopher go to Kendra's apartment parking lot and they wait for Kendra to get there because remember that they do know about her whereabouts and they basically have her routine mastered. When Kendra gets to her apartment, she parks her car and she is about to get off of her car when Christopher Love runs out of the Jeep Cherokee and shoots her in the head. He also steals her purse. How convenient, right? Crystal gets there to Chili's and says thank you to Jose for letting her borrow his car. Like, how generous of you. So she takes Brenda and they get out of there. For him, it's just like, oh, okay. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for inviting me out to eat. But all the while at the um, apartment parking lot, police are already on the case. And being that Ricky is her partner, he just has to be the first person who gets interrogated. And they ask him, uh, you know, who would want to hurt Kendra? Who would want to hurt Kendra, buddy? And he is distraught. He says he has no idea who would want to hurt Kendra because, again, we know who Kendra is. She's literally a ball of sunshine. Who would want to hurt her? Does she have any enemies? And he's just broken down. He's like, I have no idea who would want to hurt Kendra. And that leaves police kind of shocked because they have no idea who Kendra would be enemies with. The police just simply think that it's a robbery gone wrong and they decide to share the information of the getaway car, a Jeep Cherokee, to which Jose is watching TV or I don't know how he came about the information. He sees this car on television and he's like, um, 911? Yeah, that's my car, but like, I, I, that's not me in the car. And he's worried because literally his car is was used for a murder. He shares that information with the police. So then the police start to interrogate because Jose is not going to go to jail for someone else committing such a horrible thing. And he tells her that he had lent his car to his friend Brenda Delgado. The police take her in for an interview. It's, uh, there's no really, there's no persecution. They're just kind of wanting to see, like, what all they can get from Brenda. But they're not doing the whole bad cop, good cop thing. When I was watching the interrogation videos, he was very calm. He was like, I'm not going to yell at you. I just kind of want to know what's going on. Brenda literally was putting her breasts on the table. He's being really friendly. So, like, if they take you in because they think that you murdered someone, would you be, like, borderline flirting with the cop? Because I would be like, look... I don't know what's going on right now. It, mm -mm, mm -mm, it wasn't me, buddy. Oh, why, why do y'all think it's me? You know? And you might think that that's like suspicious on my part, but I really do not think so. I would be like, okay, I think you guys have the wrong person. <laughs> she was way too calm. He asked her about Kendra if he knew if she knew Kendra, and she said that she didn't know who she was. That the only reason that she knows is because she saw it on the internet that. An uptown Dallas woman was shot in the parking lot. He was a male officer, but like if I was the officer on duty and she was, she literally was to say that in front of me, I'm not going to lie. You can lie to your mother, sister, friends, but not to me. How are you going to say that you do not know who your ex-boyfriend's girlfriend is? She sticks to her story and even the cop noticed that like she was the one that was trying to make a comfortable environment and yeah no there's just no mistaking she was literally propping her breasts on the table so 
she doesn't crack and they don't get anything out of her they do book her for um a ticket party but after she pays that she just leaves one thing that i also forgot to mention is that okay the cop is like okay so you're really gonna play that game he basically breaks it down to her like this so you don't know your ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend okay i get it maybe you don't but he goes okay so you borrow a car from a friend and that friend is in the car who kills your ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend don't you think that's a little weird and she literally holds her composure she's like it does seem weird but it has nothing to do with me she is literally setting on business i'm telling you that i don't know her i don't know her like i said she left she took her she paid her ticket and she just left but baby girl crystal cortez when she is interrogated she spills the beans she says that she has proof that they've been talking she shows them the phone records and the phone records the phone records don't lie they find that christopher crystal and brenda have hundreds of uh, phone calls where they would communicate and things like that and they get a warrant for christopher and they actually find a weapon in the middle console of his car the police dog he is going crazy because he cannot find the weapon but the weapon was you would think it's an obvious place to put it but just the way that it was placed in there it wasn't easy to find but they did find the murder weapon in the center console of his car at that point they arrest Christopher Love. At this point, they know that it's something way bigger. They go back for Brenda, but when they go back to get her, Brenda's gone. Dallas police um, homicide team, they're working with the Dallas County Attorney's Office, and they are working with the United States Attorney's Office, as well as the FBI, because they're looking for Brenda. And they went ahead and made a public service announcement that Christopher Love had been identified as the person who murdered Kendra Hatcher in that parking garage. Christopher Love was put on a $2.5 million bond and they had also issued a warrant of arrest for Brenda Delgado as being the mastermind. So she was going to be charged for capital murder as well as being charged for murder for hire. Crystal Cortez was also arrested for being the getaway driver. Brenda eventually made it on to America's top 10 most wanted fugitives and were offering a financial reward for any sort of information that they had on Brenda. Brenda's family actually could not believe that she could be involved or even capable of anything like this but with investigation and with all of the officers working together they found out that she was living in Doron, Mexico for six months. But because she was American as well as a Mexican citizen, the only way that the Mexican government would allow for her to be released into the United States was if they didn't um, do the death penalty on her. So that was kind of sorted out and they said, okay we won't give her the death penalty but she does need to do her trial and she does need to serve her time for the crime that she committed when crystal was put on trial she stood her ground and said that she had an alibi that she was at chili's having some margaritas with her friend jose she was standing on business like no one was gonna change that for her so the persecutor decided to cut a deal with Crystal Cortez that they would only give her 35 years if she would spill the beans. So Crystal being a mother, which obviously that she didn't care about that if she decided to go on with this plan, but being that she had kids, she took the deal. She mentioned that there was different plans that they had kind of thought about and brainstormed. She said that there was a plan where they wanted to inject her. They also wanted to kidnap her, but they ended up just doing the um, ex execution that Christopher went through with. Christopher was actually the first one to go to trial in, in October 2018, and he was sentenced to death.
Brenda's trial began in June 2019 and was later sentenced to life in prison with no parole. Kendra's family also wrote letters to Brenda to read in the courtroom. They are just so sad because Brenda showed that she was just like a narcissist. She would just look up. She would just sit there motionless. Like she just didn't even shed a tear. She stood on her face that she was innocent. She was just like, you just watch the video and you're like, you have no sort of remorse. Like she literally thought she was going to get away with killing Ricky's fiance. And I don't know if she was thinking she could reconciliate after killing his girlfriend. I don't know what was going on in her head. That is the case of Kendra Hatcher, the beautiful dentist in uptown Dallas who was brutally murdered by selfish Brenda Delgado who could simply not take no for an answer. If I missed any information or if I miscommunicated anything, please feel free to comment that below and I will see you guys in the next video.